Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to make a diorama based on a scene from Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. I just thought this scene had so much atmosphere and it was perfect for the theme of this channel. So I had the idea of making this one a little bit bigger and make it specifically for filming and photographing. I started by making these windows and I'm taking a piece of styrene plastic and cutting it into a whole bunch of small strips that will become some blinds in the windows. In the video game, the light was shining through these blinds, creating all sorts of shafts of light in the dusty fog of the room, and I thought this would be so much fun to try and recreate. And here I'm just gluing on a tiny piece of thread to look like the string that holds all of the blinds together. To make the walls quick and easy, I wanted to do wallpaper. So I just used a glue stick and started gluing on these pieces of paper to the wall. I did it in strips so that I can weather it and have it peeling back a little bit but using the glue stick also allowed it to be much easier to peel up later. Then there was this wainscoting type stuff along the bottom half of the walls. So I got these popsicle sticks from the dollar store and cut tons of them to the same size so that I can glue them all together in a row and I used a piece of dollhouse trimming on top to complete it. So now I'm starting to use my liquid latex technique to make some peeling paint. I did a base layer of color, now I'm using the latex and then I'm going to go over the airbrush with a lighter color. Once that's dry, I can peel it up in different areas with an eraser or my finger and it'll look like peeled paint. Here I just wet the edges where the seams are on the wallpaper and started peeling it up and ripping it a little bit in those areas. Now it's time for all the furniture. Some of these pieces I 3D printed and some of them I purchased as one 12th scale dollhouse furniture. I started to assemble them and paint them and weather them. I knew I wanted to make this sink pretty nasty, so I got this swamp water product from AK Interactive and figured I'd try it out. So I mixed it up pretty thin here as the bottom layer, put in some of my dishes, and then I mixed another layer of it once it's dried and kind of filled the rest. And it came out really, really green and grimy and gross, and I think it was pretty cool.
I used some brown pigment powder here to dirty up even more and give it some variation in color. You'll notice I use this pigment powder pretty much everywhere. For the first layer of pigment powder on most of these, I use my brush and kind of just let the powder drop naturally and then use some watered down isopropyl alcohol to make that stick. Later I went in with some fresh dry pigment powder because that always creates a more dusty effect and finishes it off. Here are some more pots and some plates and mugs. These I'm just going to start putting on the dining table, maybe in some of the cabinets, and laying around on the ground. For this piece I decided I would paint it one color and then use a paint cracking effect with white glue. All you need to do is spread around some normal Elmer's white glue and immediately after, airbrush on the next layer of paint. It pretty much right away starts cracking that top layer of paint and shows the bottom layer through. And here I'm just doing that shaking technique, just shaking the powder off of the brush so it falls naturally. And then I lock it all in with ice black all. Now I'm cutting a ton of strips of wood again to use for the flooring. For the sake of time and my sanity, I decided to just cut them all the same length and not worry about it being staggered like real flooring. And then I started to stain it all with this brown ink. Time to start putting the furniture into the scene. I staged things mostly where I wanted them and then started using pigment powders and some dirt and different things to start dirtying up the whole scene. This part can start to get tedious. I just started adding bits all over the place and tried to build up the level of things left behind in disarray. I always struggle with this because I think it probably could use a lot more than I do put in, but at some point you always have to say that you're finished. When doing this, I generally look through all these bags of little bits that I've just saved from past projects that I didn't use or repurposed and it really comes in handy. I made this little box out of cardboard and put some white powder in it to make it look like maybe a spill box of baking soda. This little room is gonna go in that back corner. You're not gonna see much of it, but it's just gonna create that extra interest by adding depth to the scene. I made it separate because of how big this project is and it was a lot easier to move things around and work on them. Now for the ceiling. In the game, there were some exposed rafters and just really nasty looking ceiling. So I started building out these rafters and then I took some pieces of mat board and started gluing them like they were panels and so that there were panels missing at this point. I then started to rough them up after making them wet and used some really watered down ink to start dirtying these and make them look like they have had a lot of water damage. I 3D modeled and printed the ceiling fan and I think I could have made it a little bit bigger for this scene actually but it still worked. I was able to print it 
glue it all together and put it into the scene with a piece of metal rod. And once I was done with that, I put the roof on and started filming. Stay tuned for another video that's going to show a little bit more about how I light and film projects like this, how I kind of design the project for the end photos, and how I use lighting to really set the atmosphere. As always, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I also wanted to say thank you so much to my patrons who support me each month. It really does help a ton to keep this channel going. And if you're interested in joining on, check out my Patreon in the link in the description and also my website where I have my 3D models that you can print um, for yourself and use in your own projects. See you next time.